everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Lab 207 webcast. My name is Mr. Kite and I'll be hanging out with you today. We continue on in our series about the origins of life. Topic for the day is Hardy-Weinberg principle. Now I'm going to tell you right off the bat, Hardy-Weinberg principle is one of those things that actually requires you to do stuff. Like you have to be able to apply this. There are some mathematical models we're going to go through. So this is something that you're going to have to practice at before you get it. But it's a very powerful thing that, I don't know, goes a long way in describing the process of evolution. As always, let me get you your objectives before we get going. So things to know or to be able to do by the end of this video. First of all, understand the purpose of the Hardy-Weinberg principle. What is it? What's it about? All that good stuff. Discuss the conditions necessary for Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. Um, throughout your biology courses, they will talk about Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium quite a lot. There are five conditions that need to be met for that to be true. We'll talk about those. Last one is where the rubber hits the road. Apply the Hardy-Weinberg equation to real-world situations. Before we get going, we need to talk about some vocabulary. Two words that you need to know going forward are population and gene pool. Population is defined as animals of the same species in the same place and in the, at the same time. Example of this, there are white-tailed deer scattered all over America. If you wanted to talk about a population of white-tailed deer, you would be talking about, for example, the white-tailed deer that live in Duke Forest in Durham, North Carolina. That would be a population. It's all the same species, white-tailed deer in the same place, Duke Forest, at the same time, fall of 2012. So that would be a population. If you're talking about the gene pool, that is all of the genes contained within a population. Genes for all the traits in that population. Now let's just talk about Hardy-Weinberg and what it's about. Essentially Hardy-Weinberg is a way to talk about whether an allele is evolving in a population. So essentially that's saying is a dominant allele becoming more pervasive or is a recessive allele becoming more pervasive or is the heterozygote condition becoming more pervasive. That's what it's about. Hardy-Weinberg equation and equilibrium which we'll talk about in a second um, explains essentially an ideal situation. So this Hardy-Weinberg equation, there are five criteria that have to be met for a population to be in a Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. If the equation is run and that population is not in equilibrium for that allele, then some force is acting on it, causing the allele to uh, evolve or to become more prevalent in a population. So it's almost like a null hypothesis. Hardy-Weinberg is the ideal for comparison, so it's kind of like a control for you to compare a population to. If the population for whatever allele you're tracking <clears throat> does not meet the conditions for Hardy-Weinberg Hardy equilibrium, then you can start investigating what force is acting upon this population to push it out of equilibrium. Speaking of those conditions, there are five of them for you to know. First one is no mutations. So for an allele in a population, if it's going to be in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, no mutations can happen in that allele. Second one is random mating. There cannot be any choice based on appearance, size, strength, anything. It has to be random male, random female. Just shuffle the deck, pick a card. There you go. Third one is no natural selection. So there are no forces of selection acting on this ideal population at all. Fifth one if it'll come up, fourth one, if it'll come up, extremely large population. When you get to small populations, you have some problems with alleles becoming more or less common. So for Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium to be true, your population has to be very large. And finally, no gene flow. Gene flow is organisms moving into or out of the population. Obviously, when they move into or out of a population, they take their alleles with them. So that is the final condition to meet Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. Obviously, if you look at this list, no population will ever be in perfect Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. That's why it's kind of the control. It is the basis for comparison, a starting point to start investigating what is maybe pushing your population in one direction or another. All right, the equation. There are two ways to look at this thing. There is the full equation, and then there's the simple one that, at least for my purposes, I actually use. Um, the Hardy-Weinberg equation, as you will see it all over the place, is this one right here. P squared plus 2PQ plus Q squared equals 1. Things that you need to understand about this equation. P squared is equal to a heterozygous dominant individual. 2PQ that is your heterozygote, so this would be equal to AA, and Q squared 
is equal to homozygous recessive. So this equation right here is essentially giving you a starting point to, I guess, assess your organisms and see what you got in the population. When it comes to actually solving Hardy-Weinberg equations, I like to use this one right here. P plus Q is equal to one because let's be honest, I'm not very good at math and this one is simple. So obviously to use this equation, you have to manipulate a couple things up here real quick. Um, to figure out what the P term is, obviously, if you take the square root of P squared, you've got P to plug into this equation. And if you take the square root of Q squared, then you have Q. So usually for the purpose of doing Hardy-Weinberg problems, you're gonna see things in this P squared, or you'll see like a homozygous dominant make up this much of the population or homozygous recessive make up this much of the population. All you gotta do is take the square root of that number and then plug it into your problem right here. I'm just gonna do one simple a, uh, one simple problem for you. If you are with me in class, obviously, we're going to do a bunch of practice problems. If you are checking us out online, just Google Hardy Weinberg practice problems. You will find hundreds of them with solutions and practice and all kinds of stuff. But you know that this is something you have to practice. Like in order to be able to work the Hardy Weinberg equations, just like any other math thing, you got to practice it if you're going to be able to do it. So here's just one quick little sample problem for you. In a population of 200 individuals, 98 exhibit a recessive phenotype. What percentage, what percentage of the population is homozygous dominant? So first thing, I should have said this on the last slide, but when you are dealing with Hardy-Weinberg, you are dealing in percentages, and remember that percentage is always re represented as a decimal. So if you've got 90% for the purpose of doing Hardy-Weinberg, that is 0.9. All right, so let's go ahead and just work down our equation here real quick. First thing we got to do is figure out what percentage of our population, this 90 individual, sorry, my pen locked up there. That was kind of weird. All right, so what percentage of our population have the recessive phenotype? So we know it's 98 out of 200 individuals. So that means that 0.49 or 49% of our population are little a, little a, all right? So that's the first part. We now know that this is equal to q squared. So in order to work our p plus q plus one, remember p plus q is equal to one, we gotta find the square root of this right here, 0.49. So if we say that q squared is equal to 0.49, take the square root of 0.49. We know that Q is equal to 0.7. And then from there, just a little simple math. We know that again, P plus Q is equal to one. So P plus 0.7 is equal to one. So this means that P is equal to Point three. Final step, we need to figure out what, because ultimately they want to know what, what percentage of the population is homozygous dominant. We know that homozygous dominant is big A. Big A, also, we know that that is P squared. So we need to take point 0.3, square it. That equals point zero 0.09. So this means that 9% of our population is Big A, big A, all right? So that is how you would figure that out. Now, if we wanted to know the heterozygous condition, there are two ways we can do this. We said that we know that 49, well, let me clear my board real quick. We know that 49% are AA. We know that 9% are AA. So if we want to know how many are heterozygous, two ways to do this. One, you can do simple math. Just add 49 plus 9 and then subtract that from 100, and that would tell you how many are heterozygous because you got to equal 100%. Or you could do it like this. If you remember from the equation, 2PQ is equal to the heterozygous condition. We know going back that P was equal to 0.7. We know that Q 
was equal to 0.3. So if we take 2 times 0.7 times 0.3, that is going to be equal to, let me see, there we go, it's going to be equal to 0.42. So we know that 42% of our population is heterozygous. Obviously, if you do a check on that, we're missing a percentage point, I believe. Nope, we're good. So that is how you would find out the heterozygous condition. Like I said, this is something you're just going to have to practice. Google Hardy Weinberg practice problems. You'll find tons of them. I will see you in class. We can talk about it there. My name is Mr. Kite. Thanks for joining us. This has been the Lab 2SN webcast. We'll see you again.